Hello everybody, welcome, this is Jensen Vars and today I'm going to teach you how to very quickly import random tables into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Let's take a look. By the end of this video we are going to learn how to import random tables from PDF files into Foundry VDD as rollable tables and I'm going to use three random tables I got from Drive through RPG. We are going to need two types of software. One is a text editor that is capable of doing regular expression um, replacement so for that I'm going to use Kate it works both on Windows and Linux as an alternative you can also download Notepad++ if you don't already have it as a PDF reader my personal recommendation on Windows is Xoro PDF uh, because I've tested it a lot and it's very performant and also can export single pages and it's really powerful when selecting and copy pasting text uh, a sec the, the one I'm going to use actually is a free open source one also working on all platforms called Ocular so with those two we're going to be able to do what we need once you have those software installed let's begin the first thing to do is install a module called easy tables by blitz so we need to open the module installer in foundry vdd and search for easy table by blitz this one we click install it's going to install a module that's capable of importing from text into a random table and we're going to need it once we have it we're going to get into our world and we're going to enable that module so we open the modules list and enable easy table by blitz once there we are going to go into the random tables um, menu and click values to table this is going to open a menu and as you can see it's expecting a comma separated list of values so we are going to convert the, the tables from the pdfs into this format so with the pdf open what we are going to do is start with the first one which is the easiest one in my opinion so if we are very lucky what we are going to be able to do is to select a column of values without selecting the number on the left so in this case it's a happy case we have 50 values here we're going to open a kate instance and paste these lines here so we have to count to verify we have 51 so there's probably one row that's breaking a line and if i look correctly there's one here 21 we need to delete this second step we continue to the pdf and select the next column of values so you will notice here that if I cross this empty space it's selecting the numbers which we don't want or we want to avoid at least. So we're going to copy until this point and going to paste on the end of the file. So we have 70 which seems correct. Then we can maybe proceed and we have identified the chunks which we can select cleanly. So if you can take a look here, um, yes we have 100 values. And what we're going to do now is replace the empty lines to put them separated by a character that we choose. So we don't want the comma because the comma appears sometimes in text. So maybe we can choose some more special value like an add. Maybe we can and should verify that it doesn't exist already. Once that we press control R and we are going to replace uh, all backslash N. Backslash N means a break line. So if we write it down and press enter, we're going to follow the cursor on the screen and it's going to show us that it's selecting correctly the line breaks. What we're going to replace them with is the character that we chose, which is this add. We're going to press replace all. And if everything went correctly, we should have exactly one row. So the only number here is one. And we have all of the values separated by add. So we have to copy them. Okay, we go to values to table in this module. And where it says values, we're going to paste this. Since we chose a separator, which is add, we're going to select it here. We're going to put it here, bits of data. That's the name of this random table. And we're going to generate. And that's it. We have it there. We need to verify that we have exactly 100 values. We can even test a roll and it should work. So let's continue with our second example. This one has number so it's a bit more tricky we cannot select exactly the column so what you're going to do is select all of them including the number and everything we have 51 here we're going to go to kate we're going to delete the previous one we're going to paste it and since we're going to have to do dirty work here we're going to better copy the second page as well and here you have to pay attention sometimes it happens that's going to select here some signature of pdf if you can avoid it better 
so you don't have to clean up something else. So let's split this copy in two parts. And then let's go to the next one here and copy here. So you need to pay attention that you're not copy pasting license numbers or page numbers because it's going to be more trouble. Once we have this in the file, well, we have more here like 120 values. So we need to fix this. The most pragmatic way to fix it is to first, as before, fix the line breaks by removing this um, line breaks. So if you're quite fast enough, we can find them because they don't have a number starting with. So maybe we can quickly. And also I'm here and removing a signature that we did not want. We remove this break line here, this one here, this one here. Continue looking as fast as possible. This was here, this one here. So I know it's not clean or perfect, but it's the most pragmatic way and it's bearable, I would say. So it's only 100 values, not always are there. So yes, we have now this fixed. And now how do we, oh, there's one here. So we need to count correctly. We have 101, so we have still one more here. Perfect, so the line number should be a validation. So now how do we fix the numbers? For that, we're going to make sure we are in regular expression mode, which we were, and we're going to identify those digits. So the trick is the following. First is backlash digit or backlash D means match a number. So it might be one or two numbers or more. So we can put backs, backslash D plus. That means it's going to match all of the numbers. As you can see here, it's matching if you press enter the numbers. Next, we're going to have to match the dot. So the dot in regex or regular expressions is a special character. So we need to backslash it. So we need to put backslash dot in order to match it. So now we are matching that as well. Next, we're going to need to match that space in the beginning. So we're going to add a backslash s, which matches also the space. Uh, with that said, all we have to do now is re replace with this regular expression everything and remove it all with replace all. So now we have a clean list of values of 100 and there's something more. We need to then re replace all of the new lines with a character. Let's keep our old character, maybe making sure there's no ads here. So we press control R, we replace all of the new lines backslash N with an ad and then we press replace all. Then we have only one line with all of the values, control A to select everything, control C. We go back to foundry, paste this, the separator still add. We give this a name. What is the name of this table? Um, this is cyberpunk traps. So cyberpunk traps, and then we generate it and we have our second table. So let's go on with the third PDF. This is a nasty one. We have here lots of text. It's not linear. It's very Yes, it's very weird and we cannot select just the text values and everything. So let's see how we can deal with it. So let's first select as much as we can in smaller steps. So if we select the entire page, here we need to pay attention that we're selecting the page number. So let's keep that, paste that on Kate and let's remove manually that page number here. So the more we recognize the better then we need to spend less time fixing it. We add a new line at the end and we'll continue with the next page. So we grab as much as we can. Then we are paying attention that number two of the page is also being selected. So let's paste and then immediately before we forget, remove that second single page number. And then we go with the third page. We copy everything. There is a page number three here. So we paste enter. Now we have a page here. We have to remove the page number three. Okay, I'm going to stop here. So it's for example, it's okay. We have 71 values, so we need to target 71 lines. How do we mess, uh, fix this mess? <laughs> um, well, first we have to deal with this line breaks as we did before, but now these are way more than earlier and we cannot or don't want to do this manually. So how do we fix it? Well, we need a trickier regular expression, which by the way, I'm going to share on the YouTube video description. Um, so what we're going to do is press Control R and we need to find the new lines. So backslash N to find new lines, all of them for now. Uh, new lines that begin 
that don't begin with a number, right? Because we don't want to touch this, we want to fix this. Not this one, but this and this and this. So we need to look for new um, lines that begin with a letter, let's say. So for that, we need to open brackets, write down lowercase a, dash lowercase z, uppercase a, dash uppercase z. And with that, what we're doing is we're telling regular expression to pick only letters that go from A to Z and uppercase A to Z. So if there are weird characters, we should add them in this bracket, but for now, this will suffice. Uh, so what we're doing here, if we test it, it's selecting all of the lines that we want, except the ones that have a number. So now we need to remove that new line and put it back on the line above. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is, uh, oops, what happened? Never mind that. So what we need to do is uh, also not lose. So we cannot replace this because we would replace the first letter as well. So for that, we need to do matching groups. So we need to group what we want to keep. So we put in parentheses what we want to keep. In this case, we want to keep the letter that this is matching. So we put it in parentheses open and close. And what we're going to replace with is a space because we need to add a space so the, the words don't get close to each other. And after that, we're going to put backslash one. So that will basically put back the letter because it's group number one. It's only one parenthesis. If we had more parentheses, it would be backslash number two and so on and so forth. So with that said, we can go and press replace all and that should have it more or less fixed. So if we take a look here, we need to pay attention here. We have, this looks like nine line breaks, but if you pay very close attention, it's the line wrapping to the line below. So it's still row number 14. So at the end, we do have 71 rows, so that worked. Next, we have to remove those numbers. And did we do that? We did before. So we need to match uh, a digit, backslash D. Uh, it can be more of them, so plus backslash a dot because it's followed by a dot and then there's always a space it seems so we need to do backslash s to consider that space so we test it we check that it's selecting what we want to remove and then we replace all by nothing perfect and now the last step is replace all of the new lines with our special character add so we do that replace all and we should have one line with everything now we copy this we go to foundry paste this on the values block of easy table module, call this tricky table, I don't even know the name, press generate, and we have our table of 71 lines. So it works perfectly fine. Now as a bonus track for this video, I'm going to teach you how to put a macro that runs and draws a table from a random table. So let's pick up an empty slot in the macro, we click it, we need to choose type script and we're going to write down the following game tables get name and we choose a table name so we need to put it in between quotes so we choose this one for example tricky tables and we put it between quotes and then we add dot draw parenthesis parenthesis and then draw from tricky table is the number name of the macro we save it we press on the macro and it should automatically draw from it as many times as we want. So yes, that would be it. Hopefully you found this useful. I know it's not the easiest one. You can repeat the video, watch it as many times as you need. I'm going to put the commands on the YouTube description and let me know if you would like to learn more about Foundry VDD, writing macros, tutorials for setting up or customizing your world. We can talk about many things. I'm Jensen Vartz. I am a module developer for Foundry VDD as a hobby. So looking forward to hear from your feedback and stay safe.